In this video, we're looking at volcanoes, and we're looking at different types of volcanoes and how these different types are formed, and how they form, and why they form, and some brief characteristics on each type of volcano. Now, this amazing subject looks at the release of heat from the Earth's interior out through the surface into the atmosphere as a way of exchanging heat from inside the Earth, from the accretion, from the time the Earth was formed about 4.6 billion years ago. And the surface is the interface where we see this amazing natural events and eruptions of these amazing volcanoes across the planet, across the surface, and we can witness and study and investigate what's going on and look at the different types all across the Earth. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Volcanology is the study of volcanoes, and when you think of a volcano, you think of this generic diagram or generic picture of a cone-shaped object with magma and lava spewing out as this active volcano is erupting. However, in truth, these volcanoes are very common around the world, and they occur mostly around the Ring of Fire, around the edge of the Pacific Ocean, because of subduction and plate tectonics. But you do get a variety of volcanoes and types of volcanoes which come in different sizes and shapes and styles of eruptions and obviously their frequency of eruption changes as well. Some are very explosive, some are very effusive and just let off gas and some are very destructive and can, can change world climates and change the planet in terms of mass extinctions. So volcanoes come in a variety of ways and the main thing we should do is focus on the magma. And understanding magma will give a better idea of how these different types of volcanoes actually form. So to give a quick recap on magma, we have to first look at the chemistry and how and what magma is composed of. So ma magma is composed of both dissolved gases, melt, which is the liquid minerals, the heated minerals beyond its melting point at certain depths in the Earth's interior, and also parts or little components of solid minerals which haven't melted at certain temperatures based on the Bowen's reaction series and how these minerals form and crystallize and consolidate. So the chemistry is all based on elements, elements like silica and oxygen, which are very common in the Earth's crust. And when you melt the minerals, you also melt the elements and the atoms. And these elements are going to dictate the behavior and characteristics of the magma. So the silica and oxygen are going to combine and bond and form a molecule called silica. Now silica is going to control the viscosity or the thickness or the resistance to flow of that material, in this case it's magma underground and then lava on the surface. So this silica is high silica, high mass of silica between 60 and 75 percent. It's going to be a thicker magma and that thicker more viscous magma is going to contain more dissolved gases and not let the gases escape. So the gas will then increase the explosivity and the energy and the power of that eruption when it happens on the surface. So if a magma has less silica, below 55%, down to about 40%, which is very low, then it's going to be a more runnier, less thick, more thin, more fluid and dynamic magma and this would contain less dissolved gases and be potentially less explosive and have less energy in an eruption. So when the magma is going to erupt on the surface, you're going to have a volcano, which is generally defined as any crack on a piece of surface on the Earth which has flowing magma into lava and is classified as an active volcano. A dormant volcano is one that is currently not, not active, not erupting, but has magma present in the chamber. And then an extinct volcano is magma that is no longer erupting or present in the chamber, but has solidified and become an intrusive igneous body of rock. So the magma has cooled down to form igneous rock, which is part of the rock cycle. So the chemistry and the silica and the viscosity and the amount of gas is going to create and dictate the eruption style and also 
what rock the volcano will be made of. The more viscous magma is going to turn into more andesite, dacitic or diorite, and more granite. The runnier magma, less viscosity, will turn or consolidate into more basaltic igneous rock. The six main types I'm going to focus on in this video, the volcano types, are strato or composite, caldera, fissure, shield, dome, cinder, and also called scoria. Now these six volcano types are common. There are three very common, which is strato, shield, and cinder or scoria or ash cinder. And the other three, caldera, fissure, and dome, are volcanoes, but they're not as common types and are sometimes overlooked when discussing volcanology. And each of these six do have very specific characteristics based on the magma which is creating these volcanoes. So the first and most common, so about 75% of all volcanoes on the planet are going to be this type, which is strato or composite. Now composite means layered. So in terms of the formation of this volcano, the magma is going to erupt as lava and it's going to be more andesitic and dacitic magma, which will form mostly andesite and granite type igneous rocks. It will have layers of rock and then layers of lava and ash so there are alternating layers like a big layer cake it's usually a taller and narrow cone-shaped volcano with steeper slopes of over 10 degrees with a crater and a conduit being down to a magma chamber but you have this classic cone-shaped volcano that is usually portrayed in those movies that you have these large eruptions now these are usually a large eruption type volcano the next type is the shield type volcano. The shield comes from its side view or profile shape. It's looking from the surface across the landscape towards this volcano. You look at it and see it as a shield or a like a turtle shell type profile or shape. Now these are very large volcanoes. They're very wide. They can occasionally become very, very tall. Like in Hawaii, the big island of Hawaii, Mauna Loa is from the sea floor to where it is above the ocean surface in elevation. It is the tallest mountain or volcano on the planet. These generally are formed through very low viscosity, runny, thin, fast moving lava spewed out from obviously low viscosity magma. And this is generally going to be basaltic lava and going to form basalt as the igneous rock but because it runs a far away from the crater and is runny and usually hotter it's going to move a long distance and create a very wide volcano as opposed to a narrow and tall volcano which we had previously with the strato or composite the next type is the ash and cinder or scoria type volcano these are generally smaller in size they're narrow small cones of usually less than 300 meters they generally are formed or composed of layering of ash and cinder cinder is the burnt and broken pyroclastic material from the volcanic eruptions these eruptions are generally localized and smaller as the ash and tephra is going to fall back down to earth and consolidate and form these smaller volcanoes and they usually occur in groups of small numbers of these volcanoes in a local area around the volcanic outgassing. This one is the first of the three that's not as common. Now, this doesn't really look like a volcano, but as I said before in the video, a volcano is any crack in the Earth's surface that has flowing lava and actively moving magma from inside to outside of the Earth. Now, this is called a fissure volcano and it's common in places like Iceland and a diversion plate boundary in mid-ocean ridges and you have this simple crack this division in the crust and the magma is going to find this weak area and push through and flow lava onto the surface now this is also how you get large igneous provinces or LIPs large amounts of basaltic 
thin, runny lava flows. The same kind of lava that's going to form the shield volcano is going to form and, and occur in this type as well, the fissure. Now, it's not going to form this large dome like a shield, but it's going to flow across the land, generally flatter terrain, and cover the land in large areas of basaltic lava. So these are called flood basalt. This type of volcano is called a caldera. Now, this is a Spanish word that means cauldron. Now, caldera is a special volcano which starts out as a massive strato or just a very large volcano. In some cases, they're called super volcanoes. And these very large volcanoes have a lot of magma and they're generally very explosive and they erupt infrequently every once every thousand, 10,000 years on average some sooner, some longer. But when they do erupt, they're very large, catastrophic and world-changing eruptions. And once they're done, the empty magma chamber allows the rock around that makes up the volcano to collapse inside. And obviously the volcano itself has been pulverized and broken during the large eruption. And what's left of the volcano gets dropped and falls into the empty magma chamber and creates this very large depression or very large basin which is formed and is called a caldera. So the classic one that we know of in the United States is Yellowstone Caldera which sits right below the Yellowstone National Park. This volcano type is called a dome or lava dome volcano. Now these are relatively very small, just like the ash and cinder or scoria volcanoes that can form in and around larger volcanoes like a strato or a shield as part of a complex or a system of volcanoes in a certain area. And these dome volcanoes are formed from very thick, very viscous lava that's spewing out around a central vent or crater and they can form inside a larger crater and generally have steep slopes. So as an overview in this video we've covered six types of volcanoes ranging from the large to the small to the explosive and also based on the type and composition and characteristics of the magma that's flowing up to the surface and producing the lava thus producing the eruptions and creating these amazing volcanoes. And they can vary in size and shape and characteristics and dimensions and eruption styles and eruption frequency. But again, they're all based on the magma that provides the energy and the material for the eruptions. And the six types are gonna be the stratovolcano, which is also called the composite, the fissure volcano, which is the crack in the earth, the cinder or ash, or occasionally called the scoria volcano, the shield volcano, the lava dome or dome volcano, and finally the caldera volcano. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.